Mahavira, also known as Vardhamana, was the 24th Tirthankara Ford maker of Jainism. In the Jain tradition, it is believed that Mahavira was born in the early part of the 6th century BC into a royal Kshatriya family in what is now Bihar, India. At the age of 30 he abandoned all worldly possessions and left home in pursuit of spiritual awakening, eventually becoming an ascetic. For the next 12 years, Mahavira practiced intense meditation and severe austerities, after which he is believed to have attained Kavala Jnana omniscience. He preached for 30 years and is believed by Jains to have died in the 6th century BC, though the year varies by the Jain sect. Scholars such as Karl Potter consider his biographical details as uncertain, with some suggesting he lived in the 5th century BC contemporaneously with the Buddha. Mahavira attained nirvana at the age of 72 and his remains were cremated. After he gained Kavala Jnana, Mahavira taught that observing the vows ahimsa non-violence, satya truth, astya non-stealing, brahmacharya chastity, and aparigraha non-attachment is the basic necessity for spiritual liberation. He gave the principle of anakantavada, many-sided reality, syadvada and nayavada. The teachings of Mahavira were compiled by Indrabhuti Gautama his chief disciple and were called Jain Agamas. These texts were transmitted through oral tradition by Jain monks, but are believed to have been largely lost by about the first century when they were first written down. The surviving versions of the Agamas taught by Mahavira are some of the foundational texts of Jainism. Mahavira is usually depicted in a sitting or standing meditative posture with the symbol of a lion beneath him. The earliest iconography for Mahavira is from archaeological sites in the north Indian city of Mathura. These are variously dated from the 1st century BC to the 2nd century AD. The day he was born is celebrated as Mahavir Janma Kalyanak popularly known as Mahavir Janti and the day of his nirvana is observed by Jains as Diwali. Topic titles and names The early Jain and Buddhist literature that has survived into the modern era uses other names or epithets for Mahavira. These include Nyaputta, Muni, Samana, Nigandha, Brahman, and Bhagavan. In early Buddhist suttas, he is also referred to by the names Araha meaning worthy, and Vayavi derived from the word Vedas, but contextually it means wise because Mahavira did not recognize the Vedas as a scripture. Buddhist texts refer to Mahavira as Nigantha Jainyataputta. Nigantha means without knot, tie, or string, and Jainyataputta, son or scion of Natas, refers to his clan of origin as Jainyata or Naya. Prakrit. The Jain text Kalpasutras states that he is also known as Sramana because he is devoid of love and hate. According to later Jain texts, Mahavira's childhood name was Vardhamana, the one who grows, because of the increased prosperity in the kingdom at the time of his birth. According to the Kalpasutras, he was called Mahavira the great hero by the gods because he stood steadfast in the midst of dangers and fears, hardships and calamities. Mahavira is also called a Tirthankara. Topic historical Mahavira Though it is universally accepted by scholars of Jainism that Mahavira was an actual person who lived in ancient India, the details of his biography and the year of his birth are uncertain, and continue to be a subject of considerable debate among scholars. Digambara text, Uttarapurana mentioned that Mahavira was born at Kunpur kingdom of Vida, and Svetambara text, Kalpasutra used the name Kundagrama. It is said to be located in present-day Bihar, India. This is assumed to be the modern town of Basu Kund, which is about 60 kilometres north of Patna, the capital of Bihar. However, it is unclear if the ancient Kundagrama is the same as the current assumed location, and the birthplace remains a subject of dispute. Mahavira renounced all his material wealth and left his home when he was 28 by some accounts, or 30 by others, then lived an ascetic life and performed severe austerities for 12 years, and thereafter preached Jainism for a period of 30 years. The location where he preached has been a subject of historic disagreement between the two major sub traditions of Jainism, the Svetambaras and the Digambaras. The Jain Svetambara tradition believes he was born in 599 BC and died in 527 BC, while the Digambara tradition believes 510 BC was the year he died. The scholarly controversy arises from efforts to date him and the Buddha, because both are believed to be contemporaries according to Buddhist and Jain texts, and because, unlike for Jain literature, there is extensive ancient Buddhist literature that has survived. Almost all Indologists and historians, state Dundas and others, accordingly date Mahavira's birth to about 497 BC and his death to about 425 BC. 
However, the Vera era tradition that started in 527 BC and places Mahavira in the 6th century BC is a firmly established part of the Jain community tradition. The 12th century Jain scholar Himachandra placed Mahavira in the 5th century BC. According to Kalash Jain, Himachandra made an incorrect analysis that, along with attempts to establish Buddha's Nirvana date, has been a source of confusion and controversy about Mahavira's year of Nirvana. Kalash Jain states the traditional date of 527 BC is accurate, adding that the Buddha was a junior contemporary of the Mahavira and that the Buddha might have attained nirvana a few years later. The place of his death, Pavapuri, now in Bihar, is a pilgrimage site for Jains. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Biography per Jain traditions. According to Jain texts, 24 Tirthankaras have appeared on Earth in the current time cycle of Jain cosmology. Mahavira was the last Tirthankara of Avasarpini present descending phase or half of the time cycle. A Tirthankara maker of the river crossing, savior, spiritual teacher signifies the founder of a Tirtha, which means a fordable passage across the sea of interminable cycles of births and deaths called samsara. <laughs> Belonging to Kashyapa Gatra, Mahavira was born into the royal Kshatriya family of King Siddhartha and Queen Trishala of the Ikshvaku dynasty. This is the same solar dynasty in which Hindu epics place Rama and the Ramayana, and in which the Buddhist texts place the Buddha, and the Jains attribute another 21 of their 24 Tirthankaras over millions of years. According to the Digambara Jains, Mahavira was born in 540 BC. According to the Svetambara Jain texts, he was born in 599 BC. Mahavira's birthday, in the traditional calendar, falls on the 13th day of the rising moon in the month of Kshetra in the Vira Nirvana Samvat calendar. In the Gregorian calendar, this date falls in March or April and is celebrated by Jains as Mahavir Janti. Kundagrama, the site of Mahavira's birth is believed by tradition to be near Vishali, a great ancient town in the Gangetic Plains. The identity of this place in the modern geography of Bihar is unclear, in part because people migrated out of ancient Bihar for economic and political reasons. Dundas states that, according to the ''Universal History'' in Jain mythology, Mahavira had undergone many rebirths before his birth in the 6th century. These rebirths included being a hell being, a lion, and a god diva in a heavenly realm in Jain cosmology just before his last birth as the 24th Fordmaker. According to the texts of Svetambara sect, his embryo was first formed in a Brahmin woman, but his embryo was then transferred by the divine commander of Indra's army, Hari Nagamsan, to the womb of Trishala, the wife of Siddhartha. The embryo transfer legend is not accepted by the adherents of the Digambara tradition. Jain texts state that, after Mahavira was born, the god Indra came from the heavens, anointed him, and performed his Abhisheka consecration on Mount Meru. These events are illustrated in the artwork of numerous Jain temples and play a part in modern Jain temple rituals. The Kalpa Sutras describing Mahavira's birth legends are recited by the Svetambara Jains during annual festivals such as Parayushana, but the same festival is observed by the Digambaras without the recitation. <laughs> Early life Mahavira grew up as a prince. According to the second chapter of the Svetambara text Acharanga Sutra, both of his parents were followers and lay devotees of Parshvanatha. Jain traditions do not agree on whether Mahavira ever married. According to the Digambara tradition, Mahavira's parents wanted him to marry Yashoda but Mahavira refused to marry. According to the Svetambara tradition, he was married to Yashoda at a young age and had one daughter, Priyadarshana, also called Anoja. Jain texts portray Mahavira as a very tall man, with his height stated to be seven cubits feet in Aupapadika Sutra. In Jain mythology, he was the shortest of the 24 Tirthankaras, with earlier teachers believed to have been much taller, with the 22nd Tirthankara Aristanami, who lived for 1,000 years, stated to have been 40 cubits tall. 60 feet. Topic. Renunciation At the age of 30, Mahavira abandoned the comforts of royal life and left his home and family to live an ascetic life in the pursuit of spiritual awakening. He undertook severe austerities of fasting and bodily mortifications, meditated under the Ashoka tree, and discarded his clothes. There is a graphic description of his hardships and humiliation in the Acharanga Sutra. 
According to the Kalpa Sutra, Mahavira spent the first 42 monsoons of his life at Astikagrama, Champapuri, Prastichampa, Vishali, Vinayagrama, Nalanda, Mathila, Bhadrika, Alabika, Panatapum, Shravasti, and Pawapuri. He is said to have lived in Rajagriha during the rainy season of the 41st year of his ascetic life. This is traditionally dated to have been in 491 BC. Omniscience After twelve years of rigorous penance, at the age of 43 Mahavira achieved the state of Kavala Jnana omniscience or infinite knowledge under a sala tree, according to traditional accounts. The details of this event are mentioned in Jain texts such as Uttar Purana and Harivamsa Purana. The Acharanga Sutra describes Mahavira as all-seeing. The Sutra Kritanga elaborates the concept as all-knowing and provides details of other qualities of Mahavira. Jains believe that Mahavira had the most auspicious body and was free from 18 imperfections when he attained omniscience. The Svetambara believe that Mahavira travelled throughout India to teach his philosophy for 30 years after gaining omniscience. The Digambara, however, claim that after attaining omniscience, he sat fixed in his Samavasarana, giving sermons to his followers. Disciples The Jain texts state that Mahavira's first disciples were eleven Brahmins who are traditionally called the eleven Ganadharas. Gautama was their chief. Others were Agnabhuti, Vayubhuti, Akampita, Arya Vyakta, Sudharman, Manditaputra, Mauryaputra, Akalabrata, Maitreya, and Prabhasa. Mahavira's disciples are said to be led by Gautama after him, who later is said to have made Sudharman his successor. These eleven Brahmin Ganadharas, as the early followers, were responsible for remembering and verbally transmitting the teachings of the Mahavira after his death, which came to be known as Gani Padega or Jaina Gamas. According to the Jain tradition, Mahavira had 14,000 Muni male ascetics, 36,000 Aryika nuns, 159,000 Sravakas laymen, and 318,000 Sravikas laywomen as his followers. Some of the royal followers included King Sranika popularly known as Bimbisara of Magadha, Kunika of Anga, and Chetika of Vidiha. Mahavira initiated the mendicants with the Mahavratas five vows. He delivered 55 pravachana and answered 36 unasked questions <laughs> Nirvana Topic. Mahavira was born in 1935. Under a sala tree on the banks of river Rijupalika near Junyarambikagrama. He preached, then died at the age of 72. The Jain Svetambara tradition believes his death occurred in 527 BC, while the Digambara Jain tradition believes this happened in 510 BC. His jiva soul is believed in all Jain traditions to be in Siddhashila, abode of the liberated souls. According to Jain texts, Mahavira's nirvana death occurred in the town of Pawapuri. Bihar. His life as a spiritual light and the night of his nirvana is remembered by Jains as Diwali on the same night that Hindus celebrate their festival of lights. On the night that Mahavira died, his chief disciple Gautama is said to have attained omniscience. The accounts of Mahavira's death vary among the Jain texts, some describing a simple death but others describing grandiose celebrations attended by gods and kings. According to the Jinnasena's Mahapurana, the heavenly beings arrived to perform his funeral rites. According to the Pravachanasara, only the nails and hair of Tirthankaras are left behind, the rest of the body is dissolved in the air like camphor. In some texts he is described, at age 72, to be giving his final preaching over six days to a large crowd of people. Everyone falls asleep, only to awaken to find that he has disappeared, leaving only his nails and hair, which his followers cremate. Today, a Jain temple called Jal Mandir stands at the place of Mahavira's Nirvana moksha. Jain artwork in temples and texts depicts the final liberation and cremation of Mahavira, sometimes symbolically shown as a miniature pyre of sandalwood and a piece of burning camphor. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Previous births. Mahavira's previous births are discussed in Jain texts such as the Mahapurana and Tri Shashti Shalaka Purusha Charitra. While a soul undergoes countless reincarnations in the transmigratory cycle of samsara world, the births of Atirthankara are reckoned from the time he determined the causes of karma and developed the Ratnatreya. Jain texts discuss 26 births of Mahavira before his incarnation as Atirthankara. 
According to the texts, Mahavira was born as Marichi, the son of Bharata Chakravartin, in one of his previous births. Topic. Sources Tiloya Panati of Yetavarsaba discusses almost all of the events connected with the life of Mahavira in a form convenient to memorization. Acharya Jinasena's Mahapurana include Adi Purana and Atara Purana. It was completed by his disciple Acharya Gunabhadra in the 8th century. In the Atara Purana the life of Mahavira is described in three parvans 74 to 76 in 1818 verses. Vartamacharitra is a Sanskrit kavya poem describing the life of Mahavira written by Asaga in 853. Kalpa Sutra is a collection of biographies of the Jain Tirthankaras, notably Parshvanatha and Mahavira. Samavyanga Sutra is a collection of texts containing Lord Mahavira's teachings. Acharanga Sutra describes the penance of Mahavira. Teachings Colonial era Indologists, considered Jainism and Mahavira's followers to be a sect of Buddhism because of the superficial similarities in their iconography, meditative and ascetic practices. However, as studies and understanding progressed, the differences between the teachings of the Mahavira and the Buddha were found to be so markedly divergent that the two gained recognition as separate religions. Mahavira, states Mora's Winternitz, taught a very elaborate belief in the soul. Unlike the Buddhists who denied it, the ascetic practices in his teachings have been of a higher order of magnitude than those found in either Buddhism or Hinduism, and his emphasis on ahimsa against all life forms is far greater than in all other Indian religions. <laughs> Jain Agamas Mahavira's teachings were compiled by his Ganadhara chief disciple, Gautama Swami. The sacred canonical scriptures comprised twelve parts. The Mahavira's teachings were gradually lost after around 300 BC, according to the Jain tradition, when a severe famine in the Magadha region of ancient India caused a scattering of the Jain monks. Thereafter, attempts were made by Jain monks to gather again, co-recite the canon, and re-establish it in its entirety. These efforts identified differences between recitations of the Mahavira's teachings, and an attempt was made in the 5th century AD to reconcile the differences. However, the reconciliation efforts failed, with Svetambara and Digambara Jain traditions continuing with their own incomplete, somewhat different versions of the Mahavira's teachings. In the early centuries of the Common Era, Jain texts containing Mahavira's teachings were written down in palm-leaf manuscripts. According to the Digambaras, Acharya Buddhabali was the last ascetic who had partial knowledge of the original canon. Later, some learned Acharyas restored, compiled, and wrote down the teachings of Mahavira that were the subject matter of the Agamas. Acharya Dharasena, in the 1st century CE, guided Acharya Pushpadant and Acharya Buddhabali as they wrote down these teachings. The two Acharyas wrote on palm leaves, Sakandagama, among the oldest known Digambara Jain texts. Topic. Five vows Jain Agamas prescribe five major vratas vows that both ascetics and householders have to follow. These ethical principles were preached by Mahavira. Ahimsa non or non Mahavira taught that every living being has sanctity and dignity of its own and it should be respected just as one expects one's own sanctity and dignity to be respected. Ahimsa is formalized into Jain doctrine as the first and foremost vow. The concept applies to action, speech, and thought. Satya truthfulness, neither lie, nor speak what is not true, do not encourage others or approve anyone who speaks the untruth. Astya non -stealing, theft is explained as, "...taking anything that has not been given." Brahmacharya chastity, abstinence from sex and sensual pleasures for Jain monks, faithfulness to one's partner for Jain householders. Aparigraha non -attachment for laypersons, the attitude of non-attachment to property or worldly possessions, for mendicants, not owning anything, the goal of these principles is to achieve spiritual peace, better rebirth, or, ultimately, liberation. According to Chakravarti, these teachings help elevate a person's quality of life. In contrast, states Dundas, the emphasis of Mahavira on non-violence and restraint has been interpreted by some Jain scholars to 
not be driven by merit from giving or compassion to other creatures, nor a duty to rescue all creatures, but resulting from continual self discipline, a cleansing of the soul that leads to one's own spiritual development and ultimately brings about spiritual release. Of these precepts, Mahavira is most remembered in the Indian traditions for his teachings of ahimsa non -injury as the supreme ethical and moral virtue. Mahavira taught that the doctrine of non-injury must cover all living beings, and causing injury to any being in any form creates bad karma which affects one's rebirth and future well-being and suffering. According to Mahatma Gandhi, Mahavira was the greatest authority on ahimsa. Topic. Soul Mahavira taught that the soul exists, a premise that Jainism shares with Hinduism but not Buddhism. According to Buddhism, there is no soul or self, and its teachings are based on the concept of anatta. In contrast, Mahavira taught that the soul is permanent and eternal with respect to dravya substance. Mahavira additionally taught that the soul is also impermanent with respect to paryaya modes that originate and vanish. To Mahavira, the metaphysical nature of the universe consists of dravya, jiva, and ajiva. The jiva gets attached and bound to samsara worldly realms of suffering and existence because of karma activity. Karma, in Jainism, includes both actions and intent, and it colors lesia the soul, its particles stick to the soul and affect how, where, and what the soul is instantaneously reborn into after a being dies. There is no creator god, according to Mahavira's teachings, and existence has neither beginning nor end. However, there are gods and demons in Jain beliefs, whose jivas are a part of the same cycles of births and deaths depending on the accumulated karmic particles. The goal of spiritual practice is to liberate the jiva from all karmic accumulation, and thus enter the realm of the siddhas who are never reborn again. Enlightenment, to Mahavira, is the consequence of a process of self-cultivation and self-restraint. Anakantavada Mahavira taught the doctrine of many-sided reality. This doctrine is now known as Anakantavada or Anekantattva. This term does not appear in the earliest layer of Jain literature or the Jain Agamas, but the doctrine is illustrated in the answers of Mahavira to questions his followers asked. According to Mahavira, truth and reality are complex and always have multiple aspects. Reality can be experienced, but it is not possible to express it completely with language. Human attempts to communicate are naya, or a partial expression of the truth. Language is not truth, but a means and attempt to express truth. From truth, according to Mahavira, language returns and not the other way around. One can experience the truth of a taste, but cannot fully express that taste through language. Any attempt to express the experience is sayat, or valid, in some respect, but still remaining a, perhaps, just one perspective, incomplete. In the same way, spiritual truths are complex, with multiple aspects, and language cannot express their plurality, yet through effort and appropriate karma they can be experienced. The Anakantavada premises of Mahavira are also summarized in Buddhist texts such as the Samanyafala Sutta, wherein he is called Nigantha Nataputta. The Anakantavada doctrine is another key difference between the teachings of the Mahavira and those of the Buddha. The Buddha taught the middle way, rejecting, in answer to questions, extremes of the answer. It is or, it is not. The Mahavira, in contrast, accepted both, it is, and, it is not, with the qualification of, perhaps, and with reconciliation, the Jaina Gammas suggest that Mahavira's approach to answering all metaphysical philosophical questions was a, qualified yes, Syat. A version of this doctrine is also found in the Ahivika tradition of ancient Indian philosophies. In contemporary times, according to Dundas, the Anakantavada doctrine has been interpreted by many Jains as intending to promote a universal religious tolerance and a teaching of plurality and benign attitude to other ethical, religious positions. But this is problematic and a misreading of Jain historical texts and Mahavira's teachings. The many-pointedness, multiple perspective. Teachings of the Mahavira is a doctrine about the nature of reality and human existence, and it was not a doctrine about tolerating religious positions such as on sacrificing or killing animals for food, violence against disbelievers or any other living being as perhaps right. The five vows for Jain monks and nuns, for example, are strict requirements, and there is no perhaps. 
Beyond the renunciant Jain communities, while Mahavira's Jainism co existed with Buddhism and Hinduism through history, according to Dundas, each were also highly critical of the knowledge systems and ideologies of their rivals. <laughs> Gender One of the historically contentious views within Jainism is in part attributed to Mahavira and his ascetic life where he never wore any clothes as a mark of disowning everything interpreted as a consequence of the fifth vow of Aparigraha. The disputes triggered by this teaching of Mahavira are those related to gender and whether a female mendicant can achieve spiritual liberation just like a male mendicant through Jain ascetic practices. The main sub traditions of Jainism have historically disagreed, with Digambaras sky -clad, naked mendicant order stating that a woman is by her nature and her body unable to practice asceticism, such as by living naked, and therefore she cannot achieve spiritual liberation because of her gender. She can at best, state the Digambara texts, live an ethical life so that she is reborn as a man in a future life. In this view, she is also viewed a threat to a monk's chastity. In contrast, Svetambaras white -clad, wear clothes, have interpreted Mahavira's teaching as encouraging both males and females to pursue a mendicant ascetic life with the possibility of moksha kaivalya, spiritual liberation regardless of gender. Rebirth and realms of existence Rebirth and realms of existence are foundational teachings of Mahavira. According to the Akaranga Sutra, Mahavira comprehended life to exist in myriad forms, such as animals, plants, insects, water bodies, fire bodies, wind bodies, elemental forms, and others. He taught that a monk should avoid touching or disturbing any one of them including plants, never swim in water, nor light a fire or extinguish it, nor thrash their arms in the air as such actions can torment or hurt other beings that live in those states of matter. Mahavira preached that the nature of existence is cyclic, where the jiva soul of beings is reborn after death in one of the triloka, heavenly, hellish, or earthly realms of existence and suffering. According to Mahavira, human beings are reborn, depending on one's karma actions as a human, animal, element, microbe, and other forms, on earth or in a heavenly or hellish state of existence. Nothing is permanent, everyone, including gods, demons and beings on the earthly realms, die and are reborn again based on their karma merits and demerits. It is the jina who have reached Kavala Niyana who are not reborn again, and attain the Siddhaloka or the realm of the perfected ones. Topic. Legacy Topic. Ascetic lineage Mahavira has been mistakenly called the founder of Jainism. Jains believe that there were 23 teachers before the Mahavira, and they believe that Jainism was founded in far more ancient times than that of the Mahavira, whom they revere as the 24th Tirthankara. The first 22 Tirthankaras are placed in mythical times. For example, the 22nd Tirthankara Naminath is believed in the Jain tradition to have been born 84,000 years before the 23rd Tirthankara named Parshvanatha. Mahavira is sometimes placed within Parshvanatha lineage, but this is contradicted by all Jain texts, which state that Mahavira renounced the world alone. Jain texts suggest that Mahavira's parents were lay devotees and followers of Parshvanatha. However, the lack of details and mythical nature of the legends about Parshvanatha, combined with medieval-era Svetambara texts portraying Parsvites as pseudo-ascetics, with dubious practices of magic and astrology, have led scholars to debate the evidence for Parshvanatha's historicity. Regardless of scholarly speculations, according to Dundas Jains believe that Parshvanatha lineage influenced Mahavira. Parshvanatha, as the one who removes obstacles and has the capacity to save," has been a highly popular icon and his image the greatest focus of Jain devotional activity in temples. Of the 24 Tirthankaras, the Jain iconography has celebrated Mahavira and Parshvanatha the most since the earliest times, with sculptures discovered at the Mathura archaeological site that have been dated to the 1st century BCE by modern dating methods. According to Mora's Winternitz, Mahavira may be considered as a reformer of a pre existing sect of Jains called Niganthas that is mentioned in early Buddhist texts. Festivals The two major annual festivals in Jainism associated with Mahavira are Mahavir Janti and Diwali. 
During Mahavir Janti, Jains celebrate the birth of Mahavira, 24th and last Tirthankara teaching God of Avasarpini. In Mahavir Janti, the five auspicious events kalyans of Mahavira's life are re-enacted. Diwali marks the anniversary of Nirvana or the liberation of Mahavira's soul, the last Jain Tirthankara of the present cosmic age. It is celebrated at the same time as the Hindu festival of Diwali. Diwali marks the new year for Jains and commemorates the passing of their 24th Tirthankara Mahavira and his achievement of moksha. Adoration The Svayambhustotra by Acharya Samantabhadra is the adoration of 24 Tirthankaras. Its eight slokas aphorisms express adoration of the qualities of Mahavira. One such slaka is shocked face, Lord Jina. Your doctrine that expounds essential attributes required of a potential aspirant to cross over the ocean of worldly existence samsara reigns supreme even in this strife-ridden spoke of time pancham call. Accomplished sages who have invalidated the so-called deities that are famous in the world, and have made ineffective the whip of all blemishes, adore your doctrine. The Yukthyanasasana by Acharya Samantabhadra is a poetic work consisting of 64 verses in praise of Mahavira. Influence <inaudible> 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 Mahavira's teachings influenced many personalities. Rabindranath Tagore wrote, Mahavira proclaimed in India that religion is a reality and not a mere social convention. It is really true that salvation can not be had by merely observing external ceremonies. Religion cannot make any difference between man and man. A major event associated with the 2500th anniversary of the Nirvana of Mahavira took place in 1974. According to Padmanabh Jaini, Probably few people in the West are aware that during this anniversary year for the first time in their long history, the mendicants of the Svetambara, Digambara and Stanakavasi sects assembled on the same platform, agreed upon a common flag Jaina Devaha, an emblem Pratika, and resolved to bring about the unity of the community. For the duration of the year four Dharma Kakras, a wheel mounted on a chariot as an ancient symbol of the Samavasarana Holy Assembly of Tirthankara Mahavira traversed to all the major cities of India, winning legal sanctions from various state governments against the slaughter of animals for sacrifice or other religious purposes, a campaign which has been a major preoccupation of the Jainas throughout their history. Iconography Mahavira is usually depicted in a sitting or standing meditative posture with the symbol of a lion beneath him. Every Tirthankara has a distinguishing emblem that allows worshippers to distinguish similar looking idols of the Tirthankaras. The lion emblem of Mahavira is usually carved below the legs of the Tirthankara. Like all Tirthankaras, Mahavira is depicted with shrivatsa and downcast eyes. The earliest iconography for Mahavira is from archaeological sites in the north Indian city of Mathura. These are variously dated from the 1st century BC to the 2nd century AD. The use of the Shravasta mark on Mahavira's chest, along with his Dhyana Mudra posture, appears in Kushana Empire era artwork. The differences in the Mahavira artwork between the Digambara and Svetambara traditions appear in the late 5th century AD and thereafter. According to John Court, the earliest archaeological evidence of Jina iconography with inscriptions precedes its datable texts by more than 250 years. Many images of Mahavira have been dated to be from the 12th century and earlier. An ancient sculpture of Mahavira was found in a cave at Sundarahapuram, Thini district, Tamil Nadu. K. Ajithadas, a Jain scholar based in Chennai, dated the sculpture to the 9th century AD. Temples According to John Court, the Mahavira Temple at Ajin, Jodhpur, Rajasthan, is the oldest Jain temple surviving in western India. It was constructed in the late 8th century AD. Other temples of Mahavira include Jal Mandir, Pawapuri, Sri Mahavirji, Kerali, Rajasthan, Machal Mahavir Temple, Rajasthan, Sankagata, Karnataka. Lakundi Jain Temple in Lakundi, Radha Mahavirji, Bijapur, Rajasthan, Bandhavapur Jain Tirth. See also Notes 
Topic References Topic Citations Topic Sources Topic External Links Quotations related to Mahavira at Wikiquote Harvard Pluralism Project, Jainism <laughs>